Hello my soccer universe. I guess it was inevitable that Sevilla is gonna win another European final and however this would have ended the big story would have been they win another final or for the first time they lose another final. I have to say while I made a point that Mourinho hasn't lost a final yet and probably in his mind he still has not lost it because he did not lose in regulation or in extra time but on penalties which technically is not a loss. Uh, that was always kind of a little bit the smaller story because you know that's one individual against one big organization. But I also have to say that in my mind this is not so much a final that Sevilla won but I think this is a final and you gotta look at uh, Jose Mourinho also a little bit for that. I think it's a final that Roma lost because it was right there for them. They controlled large swaths of the first half. Um, probably should have made two goals. Yes, there was the Rakitic chance very, very late on. Um, but And while uh, Sevilla had more of the game, more possession, more control over the game, uh, and with Roma especially falling back, the bigger chances fell to Roma. There is no doubt about that. This was there for Roma for the win. And my biggest question on that one is, uh, you saw when Dybala went out, it actually changed quite the game a little bit because that was the one creative uh, player that, that they had, they had was really there. But to me, even worse was that uh, when it came then later on to the penalty shoot, 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 shoot that um, all the players that I would actually bank that make a penalty were taken off Talking Dybala, Tim Abraham, why didn't he last? Why did Belotti came on? I mean, as soon as Belotti came on, I actually had had the feeling, uh, nah, I mean, Roma is not going to score another one. Uh, far from enough, he had, he had probably one of the biggest chances uh, there, but and we, we had a brilliant save. But then you also had uh, Pellegrini, who is a who really is the free kick taker and the one uh, last creative player that they had on the field, in my opinion. Uh, especially in dead ball situations, he also had had to come off for El Sharavi. And I'm thinking, hmm, you could have planned this out a little bit better. Because if you know that Dybala cannot play a full game, and uh, that was, he said it even in the press conference, uh, at most half an hour, wouldn't it have been better to bring him on at half time? That's a big question I have here. Because I really thought as long as they had the creative uh, players up there, Roma were the better team, or the more uh, the, the more secure team. But the longer the game went, the more Sevilla seemed into in control, and the less I had the feeling that Roma will win this game. That actually the ball will fall Sevilla's way, and the ball again fell Sevilla's way. It was again an own goal. This is another story. It's not only in this season where they got two goals at old uh, own goals at Old Trafford to keep them in the tie, uh, a tie they should not have won. Because if they don't score these two goals, they're not going to destroy uh, United this way. i absolutely so certain about that. But that was actually the lift uh, that they needed. So that, that was the one thing. But the last Europa League final against Inter, they also won on a Lukaku on goal. So uh, what is it with on goals in Sevilla? This is, this is something re really annoying. It is admittedly also to me a little bit annoying that Sevilla again win. But uh, it's, I also have to say, it's a little bit like Real Madrid. This is the, their culture. This is their competition. And uh, for that, you got to congratulate Sevilla. And yeah, a season where they definitely were not a great team. And for them in glory. I mean, they were almost, they were in the relegation fight in La Liga. They were an absolute mess. And boom, here they are. And here they win another Europa League. Again, a new manager coming in. Turning things around, Mendili Bar, he did. The one thing that you really have, have to say, and you saw, you saw it in the game, while um, Roma, you could see, have, if they play full strength, they have the bad, better players. Uh, Sevilla were also quite well organized. Um, and their tactic was either long range shots, which went no, nowhere, but cross over cross over cross over cross. And if you have uh, Jesus Navas, uh, who is a really good crosser of the ball, and others as well, um, yeah, one will go through because once, uh, even if Roma stands uh, good, they will lose a marker or a ball will bounce off them into goal. 
And for me, the biggest thing was that, you know, when it came to penal penalties, uh, I didn't mind that uh, it was in front of the Sevilla and in the sense. And, you know, I again have, have, to, have to say I am not necessarily a Roma fan, but I'm a huge Roma sympathizer. Uh, they're definitely one of my favorite teams in Serie A. Uh, so I was definitely more on the Roma side and probably this will color the video a little bit. Um, so I didn't mind that the uh, penalty shooter was in front of the Sevilla fans. However, when I saw who was taking the penalties, I knew it. I mean, I had already the feeling beforehand, if I just look, look, look at the goalies, I trust uh, Bono way, way more than Rui Patricio. And then you look at the penalty taken, the first one is Brian Cristante, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, yeah. And then Mancini and Ibanez was not going to happen. So, let's talk a teeny bit about the game. Uh, as I said, there is actually not much to talk about. It started out, as I said, Roma controlled most of the game. It actually, the game started out much better than I expected it, it to be. It was a little bit like a 2006 World World Cup final, where I think the first 60 minutes were really, really good game. And then one team got tired or one team couldn't play anymore. In this case, then uh, the two teams got a little bit more um, hot, 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 how to say, uh, also afraid and fear took over and shithousery and all that kind, kind of stuff. And Roma really, as I said, as much as I was a Roma sympathizer, uh, Roma really, really tried their best to be as annoying of a champion as you could be. Constantly on the ref, constantly complaining. The fans, you couldn't see it on, on, on TV, but uh, well, constantly, so fans constantly throw, throwing flares, just being nasty. I usually don't mind that stuff. I actually understand it, but that was a little bit too much. And while I think Anthony Taylor got most crucial decisions right, I think he lost a little bit control of, of, of the game because that game got really ugly and he was constantly... As soon as a Roma player was down, there were Roma players encircling. There was Mourinho gest uh, gesturing and probably he has even, even a point. There should have been laid on a uh, yellow red given for Lamela. But hey, so be it. So, a little bit, I made some notes on what was ha 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 happening. For me, the first big chance came around the 12th minute, I think, when Spinazzola, I mean, Dybala uh, plays him free in the box. He needs to bury that. From that distance out in that final, he needs to bury that. That would have given Roma a momentum even more because in that first half, they were attacking. As, as I said, uh, it was a, a really good for the first half and the Roma were way, way more attacking than I would have expected. Uh, there was then a potential penalty call on Tammy Abraham. I think uh, it was a good deal who with um, the head, uh, with, with, with the foot, placed the ball and hits his head. So that was the right call, but uh, Tentem was, was definitely uh, taken. And, you know, already in, I think, in the second, second minute, uh, it was Ibanez and Goodall uh, crashing onto each other. And the game ended with more, more or less the same with them being on the floor. Uh, as much as Sevilla maybe had had a ball, but I think it was still very, very even in the, in the, in the, in the first half. Roma just seemed way more dangerous. And then there was... A midfield scramble where um, I think Matic and Rakitic got together. Rak Rakitic is giving up on the ball. It goes to Mancini, who very, very quickly plays it into Dybala. Great cutting pass, and Dybala puts it into the net. And the funny thing is that who assisted Zaniolo's goal a year, a year ago in the conference final? Mancini. His only two goal contributions in European play. Both in the, in the final, and he would be one of the decisive figures of the final. Not however in the way that he would, would, would have liked. But the finish by Dybala, really, really, really good. Uh, because of all the falling off, there was seven minutes added on to uh, the first half. And, you know, also flares and, and, and so on. It was a really... I mean, I was critical of Ant and the tale of having control over the match. But those two teams are also really, really, really hard to referee. And I wonder if uh, we one shouldn't have looked more at a latin referee for this final to be honest to 
be a little bit more strict there, uh, but you know, then I think the only thing that would have changed was Portugal or France, and I'm not sure if there's any good referee in there. I don't know. I was not very taken uh, overall by the, by the overall impression that Taylor gave. However, in this stoppage time, very early on, Rakitic has a great shot that goes off the post from the inside of the post. And you see Rui, Rui Patricio has so much luck that this does not hit his body or his limbs to go in and he produces an own goal. Um, Mendili Bar then makes a great change at halftime. He brings on Lamella, he brings on Suso. And suddenly there's a whole lot more power, especially coming over the right side. And Spinazzola, who was running a little bit ramp in the first half, suddenly had to hold back and control that. And that's also how the goal came. I mean, I, you know, those two are kind of big names. And Roma also decided at that point, let's hang back a little bit. Let's play it out like we did a year a year ago and credit where credit is due. Roma can do that. However, there was no need for it yet. And you pay for it because one of the crosses uh, there was from uh, uh, Jesus Navas get, 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 gets in and it's not even Enesiri there or Campos or whoever was celebrating. It was uh, Mancini. Goes on his thigh, goes in. It is really, really galling if you score an own goal. And then again, same story, Roma more da dangerous on, on, on the break. There was a goal line scramble. I think there was um, was the Abraham involved or, 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 or whatever. Potentially would have been whistled dead on, on VAR. But the way Ibanez then takes the last shot, uh, <laughs> he doesn't even put it on, on goal, was kind of a little bit odd. Um, the only things that I've noted from Sevilla were two long-range shots from Suso and from Fernando that were a little bit off. Then there were, of course, the two penalty situations where first Sevilla is awarded a penalty uh, for a foul on Ocampos by, um, I think it was Ibanez, but replay then really shows that he just got a foot on the ball. It was intentional. It was enough to wave that penalty off. When that penalty was given, I all had, had the, the feeling uh, with the changes and then the own goal given, I really thought this is uh, Sevilla is going to win this now in regulation like they did against Liverpool in 2016, I think this was, something like that. Um, yeah, a game that I didn't see, but from all that I saw highlights and read on, it was one that Sevilla turned around. I thought this will be ha happening again because they converted penalty for sure. Uh, however, the penalty was correctly called off and then I'm not sure about the sequence now. There was later on uh, a Matic ball that came in that hit the upper arm of, uh, I don't know, recall the player now. And it went off and Roma went ballistic into claiming that this should have been a penalty. And I think they potentially had a point. We have seen these penalties given because the arm is a little bit outside as he tries to pull it away. Um, but on the other hand, I still maintain this is not a penalty that I want to see given. And then the question is, how close was it up there? The one thing I will say, though, is this would be a safe situation where I would have liked that VAR intervenes and lets Anthony Taylor look at this. And he makes a decision. Do I give this penalty or do I not give this penalty? However, I always have the feeling, especially with English referees, that they, if they are called out to go outside, that they will more or less say that they have to change the decision and not make that the decision themselves. That's the one thing maybe, yeah, maybe in that sense it it, it was right. But well, the biggest chance in the second half came when uh, Pellegrini has a free kick and he lobs it over the wall into the path of Belotti, who takes a shot that I think the shot may have been even off target anyway, but there's also a touch by Bono on, which is a really good touch and he didn't even concede a corner for that. That was a Roma's big chance. That was the one that you have to make. And then there was a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of shithousery uh, in in the overtime. That just seemed like going for going, 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 going for ages. I thought at that beginning maybe uh, they try again, but that lasted maybe three minutes. And then it was all the wrestling, the wrangling, the arguing that you could imagine until deep into stoppage time. And the entire game 
had a total of 26 minutes added on. This is a game that started in May and ended in June. Cannot say that about many, many games. This was just awful to watch in a, in a, in, in a way. And given what I said about the penalty takers, I really wonder why was Roma still... I mean, yes, in the last five minutes of stoppage time, they realized maybe we better get something, but honestly, you need to go for it because you were not going to win this penalty shootout. You were just not... Look at what player Sevilla had on to take. Look at your goalies. I trust Bono a hundred times more than I trust Rui Patricio. On that. This is what I don't under understand. And, the, and, and again, why don't players like Spinazzola, Pellegrini, Abraham last longer? I mean, Mourinho has throwing all his eggs in the Europa League basket. Saving them during league play. That is the one thing that I do not get. The big chance they had when a header by Smalling, who seemed innocuous, goes down, 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 it does not fall into the corner, it hits the crossbar. That was the chance for Roma to win it. I had also, uh, and then also the, the second yellow card that should have happened for Lamela. I don't know if Ocampos was, was aware of that, but the way how he got in the face of the referee, then he got the yellow card. And the referee for law, uh, forgot about Lamela. That was also interesting. That was really, really in interesting to me. Penalty shoot uh, quickly was decided. It goes to the Sevi uh, to the Sevigo. It's the third Europa League final in a row that ends in penalties. Uh, also note that. And then Sevilla take first. And that is usually, usually crucial at advantage. Who, who steps up first? Lucas Ocampos. Buries it. Cristante... A goalie was there, Bono, but was was a well-taken penalty. He composed himself. Then uh, Lamela, uh, goalie, Patricio was in the corner, but it was way too well taken. And then Bono jumps around. And Mancini says, okay, I go do a two to the middle. But uh, the legs of Bono are still outstretched, and that's how he got it. It was a really, really weird save. Then Rakitic, again, bear, 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 I think goalie was there. Uh, Ibanez... Also say, uh, hits the post. Maybe there's a touch from the goalie, but I, th I, I think it was going to get against the post, but it could have gone in otherwise. So uh, that, that, that was a big one. At that moment, it was clear uh, Roma is not going to win that one. They would have needed the Rakitic to miss one or Ibanez to convert and then maybe hope that something misses. Then Rui Patricio gets the save against Montiel. However, he's off the line and Montiel converts the second one. And congratulations, Sevilla, you win the Europa League for the seventh time. Seven. There are not many teams that have won seven titles. Seven Euro Euro European titles. So that's really, 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 really big. Uh, and so the first European title goes to Spain. The latter two will all be uh, all English against Italian finals. I am somewhat hoping that it will be a split, that we get one winner then from Italy, we get one winner from England. Personally, you know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm CRA, I would have loved if uh, CRA makes a sweep. Um, yesterday, this was probably the biggest chance, the way I see it. I still cannot get over it. I think Roma blew that one. I really think Roma blew that one. It's hard to, uh, it's tough to swallow that, honestly. But, you know, that's what the world, what, what it was. Uh, but again, a uh, huge credit to Mendili Bar of stabilizing Sevilla. They looked a little bit undeniable, but in that final, as I said, I always had the feeling that Roma, as long as they were full strength, they were the better team. But the game lasts 120 minutes. And also the last thing I want to say is Montiel, the story of, you know, Ocampos, La Mela, Montiel, Argentinians. Not all of them, I think, winning the World Cup, but Montiel sealing the win like he did in Qatar just a few months ago. In any case, what were your thoughts on this rather tedious Europa League final? I would like to know that give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you can notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!